Hi everyone, Anthony Morganti here. Today I'm going to demonstrate how to use plugins with Apple Photos. There are two different areas in Apple Photos that contain plugins. One of those areas contain plugins that may or may not work. And then there's another area from within Apple Photos that you could access plugins, and those plugins should work. Now, to get to that first area, that area that contains plugins that may or may not work, what you need to do is open up a file in the viewer. So just double click on an image. Now, we're not in the edit panel. We're just in the viewer and you need to go up to image and then down to edit with and you can see there's a number of different applications here. Now I've said that these may or may not work. I've tried to use Topaz Labs Denoise AI. You can see it at the top. I've also tried to use Sharpen AI and neither of those would work. Uh, it acted like it would work but then when I saved it, it didn't do anything to the original image in Apple Photos and it didn't save a copy anywhere. It just didn't work. Um, so I'm going to make the assumption that uh, it's that uh, same way for all of the Topaz Labs applications listed here and probably some of the other ones. So where are those plugins that do work? Well, Apple Photos calls them extensions. And to get to those, you need to go to the edit panel so we'll click on edit and then over here you'll see a circle with three dots in it. Click on that and there is a list of all the extensions that work in Apple Photos. And this is a raw file. It's a portrait not processed at all that I took in my studio. So I want to edit it with On One Portrait AI. So I'm going to go down right to On One Portrait AI 2021 and click on that and it will open this raw file in On One Portrait AI. While it's doing that, let me mention very quickly that in the description below this video, I'll have a link to a playlist. That playlist will contain all the videos that I do on Apple Photos. Uh, this is the third one. All of them have been done on a Mac. Uh, in the next video, I'll show you how to use Apple Photos on an iPhone. Uh, so look for that, make a copy or... Um, make a note of that playlist that will be listed in the description below the video. Now, when you open up an image into On One Portrait AI, uh, those, for those of you not familiar with it, uh, On One Portrait AI automatically does a little bit to it. If I click on the preview button down here, you can see there's the original and there is the edited. So it did uh, some lens corrections and it also did a little skin smoothing. You could see that that's turned on and it did a little skin smoothing. Now what I really want to do here is I want to overdo it so that you could see that when we return to Apple Photos that it really is an edited image from uh, On One Portrait AI. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to get the retouch brush, uh, specifically this little Band-Aid one which is called the retouch brush. And I'm going to, there's a little dry skin there, a little dry skin here. So I'm going to remove that, but I'm going to also remove these uh, few moles. Now, typically I don't remove moles on a person. My kind of philosophy on processing a portrait is if something is on a person's face that is temporary, like a blemish or maybe a scratch, I'll remove that. But anything that is more permanent, like a mole, I'll leave unless the uh, person specifically tells me to remove it. So in this case here, I'm just doing it for the video. Uh, so we're just going to get rid of a couple little blackheads up there, some dry skin, and those three or four moles. Then I'm going to go over to the right and I'm going to process it a little more heavily than I typically would have. Uh, see, those of you again not familiar with, I should actually click off the healing brush. Go back to faces. There we go. Um, for those of you not familiar with on one portrait AI you could like slim the face that's something I never did do I've never done that I do enlarge the eyes a little bit sometimes so I'll just enlarge them the very little bit I'll brighten the eyes 
I'll whiten them a little more. I'm going to really overdo it on detail so she has like marble eyes. So that way it's super obvious when we get back to Apple Photos that I did something here. And uh, we'll add some vibrance to her lips. And we'll call it done, all right? So we'll click on done. So it's obvious. Here, here's a preview uh, off. There's before and there's after. So obviously I overdid it. So we're going to click done. Now it's going to come back into Apple Photos and it's going to be in kind of a staging area, I like to call it. So you can see at the top it says Photos on One Portrait AI. And it's asking you to either save the changes or cancel. So I'm going to save the changes. And then it will be back in the edits section of um, Apple Photos. And you can see the marble eyes. You can see the, the uh, moles are removed. Now over here on the right, if you reset adjustments, that's grayed out because that just pertains to the adjustments that we do in Apple Photos. But if you do want to see a before after, you would go over here and click right here. And there's like before and there's after, the before, after. And you can see how when I brightened her face, it brightened up everything before, after. Now you could revert to the original. Now if I do that, it will just undo everything that Apple Photos did. Um, but once you do that, you may not on some plugins be able to go back. I believe on this one I can, so I'm going to risk it. I'm going to revert to original and you could see. But if I go up to edit, I could undo revert to original. That may not be, um, i playing around with this with other plugins. That was grayed out on a couple of them. So you weren't able to revert back to the edited image from the plugin. So that's as easy as it is. I could continue processing here if I wanted to uh, with some other things if I needed to do. But let's just click done. Now it's still a raw file. If I go back, you can see it still says raw in the top left hand corner here. And I purposely wanted to use a raw file so you could see that. This of course would work on JPEGs, TIFFs and other file types as well. Um, one thing that Apple Photos does not like is DNG files. So if you import or drag a DNG in here, it's probably not even going to see it. It's just going to be a, a blank box. So you're going to need a manufacturer raw file. This happened to be a Nikon raw file from a Nikon D850. And um, you can see that it's there. I'll just There's our edits are still there. So that is how you get to plugins in Apple Photos. Now real quick, when you're in this grid view, if I go up to image and I go to edit with, you can see they're all there as well. All these ones that may or may not work. Um, for those of you that have tried some plugins in this section, if you found some that do work or don't work, let us know in the comments below. You'll save other people maybe some time that are trying some of these, like maybe they're trying NX Studio or Color Effects Pro 4, and maybe it works, maybe it doesn't. Personally, I haven't tried those, but you could let us know because you know those weren't available in the extensions section. So uh, that's it. That's uh, how you would use plugins in Apple Photos. Thank you everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon.